All right, we're on the boat here with the big Ben Colo. <laughs> Targeting some ranking cod today. So we're gonna chuck on the dive gear. We'll put a marker boy out the back about 30 meters. We'll swim out there now and see if we can pop a few ranking. What do you reckon, big Benno? Give it a nudge. Fish down the bottom. A couple of good arches hanging off the back there. Some solid ranking, big fella. You. How's that? That is force. Where are we going? We're going. We're sending it. Number two for the day. Yeah. That's it. Ooh. One for the chiller bag. Yeah, it should taste good. Ew. <laughs>
Dale. Au. I'll give you, I'll give you a five. Like. Have a good ranking on the spear. Struggled a little bit in the current today, but you know, I'm getting a couple for the dinner table. We'll take these ones in there. Did a bit of trolling the other day for ranking, so I'll play some footage now of getting ranking on the troll, and uh, we'll head on back home. Let's get into it. You. be just trawling behind the boat with deep divers and uh, see if we can pick up some ranking cod. They are a pretty aggressive fish so if we can find them it shouldn't be too hard to get them online. How's that? <laughs> Ranking on the deep diver. Oh, she's going nuts too. Savage Manic Diver. I've been trolling it along in about 13 metres of water where it drops off to about 18 metres. And uh, some of the ranking is stacking up along that edge. So. But if you want to travel, then go alone. Yeah, what's the point in us if I never know? Yeah, if you're gonna leave, I'ma let you go. Filleting's done. We didn't have too bad a day out there today in the water. Um, the viz wasn't awesome, but we still were able to find a couple of ledges holding some rankin. I wouldn't say rankin are a difficult fish to spear. They sort of come out at you. They're quite territorial and quite an aggressive species, so they'll come out at you and have a look as you're swimming down to them, and they'll sort of meet you head on. And then once I've had enough of that, they'll turn side on to go back into the cave and they present themselves with quite an easy shot. 
Um, the one thing you got to watch with them though is when you do plug them, the first thing they want to do is knuckle back down and get under a ledge or a cave. You really got to make sure you make that shot count and don't give them a chance to go back under because once they get under the ledges it makes it a bit of a mission to get them back out. So the other day I also went out trolling for Rankin. I was trolling at an edge of about 13 metres and it dropped off to about 16 metres. I chose a Savage Gear Manic Prey, the Deep Diver model. These ones here in particular dive down to about 9 metres of water. They've got a really large bib on them and they've also got a really loud rattle. This lure here was ideal for the situation I was in because the ranking was sitting about 3 or 4 metres above the ledge and I was able to get the lure right in the strike zone and pick up a couple of ranking that way. When I set these lures up with trebles, I like to do it in a particular way that allows the treble hook to cradle the lure rather than spike the lure when it's swimming. I find that if you pay a bit of attention to when you're rigging your lures up, you'll get the best action possible out of them. I'll show you now the way I rig up the hard bodies with trebles. Right oh. So when I'm running my trebles onto my hard body lures, I like to pay attention to how the hook's been put together and you'll find that on trebles, on any good treble, that I'll run in line with one of the hooks and between the other two. And you want to make sure that when you thread it onto the split ring, the body of the lure runs between the two hooks and not in line with the one by itself. So when I'm running this treble here onto the hard body, I'll thread it on this way. So when it's when the lure is swimming, this one here can tuck either side of the body and it sits nice and streamlined. So I'll rig that up now and show you what I mean. When I'm threading this treble hook onto the split ring, I want to run it this way, this way, so I'll put that on now. So when they're on the hard body and the lure is swimming, you've got the two hooks with the eye of the treble sitting flush with the body. So when the actual lure is swimming, this hook here can sit as streamlined as possible. So you'll see with this one here how I've rigged it up. When this lure is swimming and the hook's pushed up against the body, both hooks will sit either side. If I had it rigged the opposite way around, the hook would be the main hook of the body at its natural point will be sitting on the body of the lure. So you want to try and avoid that if you can. It's not going to make a huge difference to the way the lure swims, but it does make a small impact. And when you really want to try and make these lures swim to the best of their ability, every 1% counts. So if you're rigging your lures up with treble hooks, just pay a bit of attention to how the hook eye is set up and, and how it actually sits with the body of the lure. So apart from spearing and uh, trolling for Rankin, they'll also take big baits and jigs. Um, some of the jigs that I use on Rankin are more of a slow pitch jig. I've been using the flapjacks recently. These ones here are available on our website. Um, I usually rig them with twin assist for a better hookup rate. I also use the pirate jigs with a skirt on them. Um, these are good for a lot of the demersals because you can fish them really slowly and fish that bottom sort of column of water quite easily with them. And last but not least, I like using the Savage Squish Jig. This one here is awesome for a variety of different species, but the Rankin seem to really love these jigs as well. So when I'm selecting jig weights, I usually run about 2 grams per metre. So say if I'm running in 30 metres of water, I'll be running sort of a 60 gram jig. Vice versa, people have their own sort of methods, but that one sort of seems best for me. I was running 80 pound when I was trolling the other day, um, and I usually like to crank my drags right up. As soon as they attack their prey, the first thing they want to do is run straight back under the ledge, so you really want to try and stop them before they do that. We've caught them a lot by spearing, on baits, on jigs, so I'll run some previous footage on these methods, and then we'll jump into the kitchen and uh, finally cook these things up and do a taste test on it. So let's get into it. Yeah.
Taste test. Mm. Nice and firm fillet. Again, quite a white flesh. Um, and tastes really nice as well. One thing you do have to watch with Rankin Cod is um, on the larger models, sort of the 6 to 10 kilo range. They're pretty prone to getting things like parasites and worms, so just one thing you gotta look out for. I have heard that um, cooking it is enough to kill the parasite and things like that, but I tend to lead on the side of cautions and just cut as much of it as I can out if the feel it is savable. I'm gonna give the ranking a three and a half out of five star. I'm gonna use the rest of the fish now to make up a fish curry. Um, fish like the rank and cod have a good texture and they seem to hold their shape, especially for things like curry. So let's go ahead now and uh, cook one up. You Start off, we'll chop up some onions. We're out of brown onions, so red onions it is. Okay, next we want the red chili. About that much garlic. That's a good amount. Um, and some ginger. I've got some frozen chunks of fresh ginger, so we'll cut these up. Some coconut oil in the pan. A little bit of yellow mustard seeds. A couple of teaspoons. 
Now we're getting a good temperature when they start to pop, so we'll turn that down. Piece of curry powder. Put in that onion and the chili. Get that happening. Uh, we're whacking the ginger. Squeezing the garlic. Next, we'll put in a bit of chili powder. Get that in there. Next, we'll put in a bit of turmeric. Add a teaspoon of that, maybe. Chopped rank and cod. Whack that in the pan. We'll add a little bit of water just to get it going. Yeah, about there. Right, our next thing we're going to put in is a tin of tomatoes. Get them in the pan. Beautiful. And a tin of coconut milk. We just want to let that simmer for the next 20 minutes or so until this fish is cooked right through. And in the meantime, we'll uh, cook some rice. Right, it's almost been 20 minutes. We'll give it the old salty taste test. Mm. Maybe a little bit more salt. Give it a bit of a stir up. Finish cooking your rice up. And let's serve it up and get into it. Put some fresh coriander. Utsa! Right now we're going to finish up eating the fish curry for dinner. If you enjoy fish curries, give this one a go, it's pretty good. Um, thanks again for watching the episodes and uh, if you can, click that little subscribe button and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Yeah.